Hi guys, in this video we will look at chromosomal inheritance theory and the work of Sutton and Bavari. We'll start off with a bit of background information as to where cytology was at the end of the 19th century. We'll then talk about the work of Theodore Bavari uh, on sea urchins and Walter Sutton in grasshoppers. And then we'll look at the combined chromosomal inheritance theory uh, that puts their work together. So firstly, a little bit of background as to where cytology, being the study of cells, was at the time. Uh, so in 1863, Gregor Mendel did his uh, experiments with peas. Uh, this was followed by 1876 when Oskar Hertwig uh, saw that fertilization was the sperm penetrating into the egg cell, uh, and he did this in sea urchins, just the same as Bavari did. And in 1883, Edouard van Beneden discovered the chromosomes within the nucleus. Okay, so all this stuff uh, leads up to the discoveries of Bavaria and Sutton, and all of these things would not have been possible without the advancements in the microscope that occurred throughout the 19th century. By about 1885, uh, Carl Zeiss uh, made a really flash lens, and what this meant is that you could now look uh, much clearer images and there wasn't distortion, and in particular color distortion, uh, where the colors used to run into each other and it would blur what you're actually trying to see due to the different wavelengths. So on to Theodore Bavari. So he was a German biologist, and he spent a lot of time studying sea urchins. And what, one of his discoveries is that the eggs and sperm both have a half set of chromosomes, and we now refer to this as a haploid number, being half the normal number. Uh, he also noticed that when during fertilization, when that sperm does penetrate the egg, uh, those cells go on to form full sets of chromosomes, and we call this now a diploid number. And he also noticed that a full set of chromosomes is required for normal development. So if you didn't have a full set of chromosomes, there are a whole heap of birth defects, or if you had too many chromosomes, there are a whole heap of birth defects that were related to this condition. Now, there's a few reasons that he used sea urchins to do his experiments. Uh, so firstly, the urchins' embryos are transparent, so it's very really easy to see into the embryos as they're developing. Um, as well as that, the embryos divide at the same time. So if there's, uh, so as that embryo divides into two, and then into four, and then into eight, as it keeps on dividing, all those cells in there divide at the same time. So you're seeing a whole heap of cells in the same stage of that mitosis. Uh, as well as having thousands of eggs all at the same stage, uh, it means that uh, the things that are very, very small, you're able to get um, and isolate uh, quantities uh, that are easier to isolate. Uh, so, yep, and that's a picture of a sea urchin, and in particular, that pink stuff you can see is the eggs of a sea urchin. Okay, then Walter Sutton came along. Now, he was an American cytologist, uh, and he used the work of Bavari and then built on it in a couple of ways. And he did his experiments with grasshopper cells. Now, the way to remember that Sutton was the grasshopper guy is that there's two T's in Sutton and two S's in grasshopper. Uh, so what he showed was that during meiosis, the number of chromosomes was halved, which was kind of what Bavari said in the first place. Uh, but then he linked this uh, specifically to Mendel's factors. Uh, so by this time, Mendel's work had been or had resurfaced uh, and people were starting to understand Mendel's work. Uh, and so they were looking for the genetic basis of the factors, and Walton Sutton was the one who said, oh, well, the chromosomes are actually the genetic base of these factors that cause hereditary traits. Uh, he worked with grasshoppers. Uh, one of the good things about working with grasshoppers is that they have 22 sets of distinct chromosomes. So you can actually see inside the cell and look at the chromosomes, and by the length of them and the shape of them, you can work out which one's which uh, in those sets. Uh, so because of this, he was able to observe that the chromosomes uh, appear in pairs. So you have two of each of those chromosomes, and we now call these homologous pairs, uh, and that these are lined up along the equator and then split to the sides uh, during meiosis. So that there is one set in one side 
and one set in the other side or and we'll go on to the uh, daughter cells. The chromosomal inheritance theory is when you, it's a joint theory when you put the findings together uh, and there's a few facets of that, that chromosomes occur in pairs and we call these homologous pairs. Uh, they move to opposite poles during meiosis. Uh, gametes have half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. When fertilization occurs, the offspring obtain one set from each gamete, so one set from mum, one set from dad, uh, and that chromosomes retain the same shape and size when they're duplicated and passed on. Uh, so they are not going, those chromosomes are not going to change uh, which set they are. They're specific to that particular pair. In this video, we've looked at the background to the Sutton Bavari chromosomal inheritance theory, uh, and in particular, we talked about the developments in microscopes that occurred in the late 19th century. Uh, Theodore Bavari and his study of sea urchins, which are clear so you can see them and uh, undergo meiosis asynchronously. Uh, Walter Sutton, who worked uh, or continued Bavari's work, uh, and showed that these, these chromosomes were actually the units of heredity uh, factors that, or Mendel's factors that are passed on from parent to child and the chromosomal inheritance theory which is uh, a list of things and it puts the two uh, guys work together into a handy little theory. Thanks for watching guys. Peace out.